Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're gonna make a very simple DIY attenuator, which will give us a safety track when recording audio on a camera or a recorder. So there's two things I wanna talk about before we jump into making this attenuator. First and foremost, I'm not an audio technician, um, so I might be butchering some of these terms. I'm just gonna be really simplifying all of this for those who may not know what attenuation is. Secondly, we're gonna talk about what attenuation is. Essentially, attenuation is the opposite of amplifying. So amplifying is boosting a signal, attenuation is reducing or cutting down on a signal. So just like sunglasses attenuate light, this little thing that we're making here is going to attenuate our audio. So what this is, is a tiny, super cheap to make little tube here. On one end, I have a 3.5 millimeter in, and then on the other end, a 3.5 millimeter out. And what this device is going to do is take stereo in, take the left and right channel and split them. The left channel is going to remain untouched and the right channel is going to be reduced or the signal in that right channel will be reduced by 18 dB. And then on the output, those are put back together and we have stereo sound. The beauty is if you're recording and have this thing between your microphone and your camera or recorder, that right channel is going to be significantly lower than the left channel. This is great if your interviewee or whatever you're shooting gets really loud and distorts or goes above zero dB. If that happens, you can easily switch over to the right channel, which is much lower and is essentially a safety track. A lot of preamps have something similar built in, but often it's for either all channels or you don't have as much control. So it's really easy to make one of these. It's incredibly cheap. So let's hop over to the bench and go ahead and put this thing together. Now let's talk about all the parts you're going to need to build one of these attenuators. Check the description and you'll find links to each one of these components. Here's what you'll need to build one of these attenuators. One 1K ohm resistor and one 150 ohm resistor. We're also going to need two 3.5 millimeter jacks. Make sure they're stereo jacks because that's going to be important. We're also gonna need some scrap wire, a spare pen, and finally one optional item and that is heat shrink tubing. First take your two 3.5 millimeter jacks and tin them using a soldering iron and some solder. Simply put, this is just heating up each of those contact points and applying a little bit of solder. This will make adding the wires and other components later a lot easier. With that done, we need to prepare the pen. Essentially, we're going to be taking a section of the pen and using that as the housing for this attenuator. Try to find a pen that you think the jacks will fit into and take it apart. You can see here that the 3.5 millimeter jacks that I'm using fit nicely into the sleeve. Next, we need to make sure we measure the correct amount of wire to cut. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps if you can get it close. Next, we're going to tin each of the wires. So here's a diagram of what we're going to be soldering together. If this looks complicated, don't worry, we're just gonna go step by step and it'll be pretty straightforward. Green represents the left channel, red represents the right channel, and the black or gray represents ground. The left channel is gonna be very simple. We're just going to connect each of the left channel pins together with one single wire. For the right channel, we're gonna start with a 1K resistor, and right after that, we're going to add a 150 ohm resistor. They're color coded so you can see which one goes where and which one is the 1K and which one is the 150 ohm. And then right in the middle and in between those two resistors, we're gonna run a wire to the second jack. And that's going to be our right channel. Now for ground, we're going to connect the input ground to the end of the two resistors, as you see here. And then we're also going to connect that to the output ground. So if you take it one step at a time, it's really not that complicated. So from here, I just started adding the wires and the resistors. Once you have everything tinned, all you have to do is hold the components together and add a little bit of heat from the soldering iron, and then they'll fuse together. This is much easier than trying to hold the wire or resistor and heat it with the soldering iron all at the same time. So here's the final product once everything soldered together. You'll notice as I was putting it together, I tried to keep everything fairly straight so we don't have to bend it too much later. Once you're done with the soldering, go ahead and test it before we enclose the entire thing. You should have roughly negative 18 on the right channel. If it's on the left channel, that's fine too. I just prefer to have the left channel be untouched and the right channel to be altered, but it really doesn't matter. If you're finding you're only getting a negative three, that means you have it backwards. So just unplug everything, switch it around, and plug things back in. This is why we're going to mark an 
in and an out on the adapter when we're done. Next, let's get to work putting all of this together. I took a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and cut the pen in half to the right length. I put everything together to make sure it fit real nicely. Then I pulled it most of the way out added a little bit of hot glue, and push the wiring and jacks back in. This way the glue will hold everything in place. I put the threaded ends back onto the 3.5 millimeter jacks. Not necessary, but it makes it look nice. And then finally we're going to add some heat shrink just to enclose the entire thing. Just make sure you know which end is the in and which is the out so that we can mark them. The jack that has the two resistors on it is going to be our input. With that noted, you can heat up the heat shrink and get things nice and snug. Last but not least, I used a label printer to print out a label that marks the in and the output as well as the level of attenuation, which in our case is negative 18 dB. And at this point, we're pretty much done. We can plug our microphone into the input of the attenuator and then the output can be hooked up to our camera or recorder. So that is how I made a really simple negative 18 dB attenuator. Now there's a couple things I wanna mention before we close and some things you can do to further modify this or customize it to your needs. The first thing you can do is change the input and output jacks or connectors. So on the one we made, I have a female 3.5 millimeter in and a female 3.5 millimeter out. You could change that and have a male on one side or even switch them to two XLRs there's a gazillion different ways you can customize it, but the principle remains the same. You have three pins on each connector on either end, and you know, you're gonna add the resistors in the same way that we did with this one. Another thing you could do is change the amount of attenuation. Um, I just kind of stumbled across this one and I was trying to find something that was negative 18 dB because I feel like that's big enough of a gap where I have a pretty significant safety track. Um, you could go with negative 12, negative, 30, negative six, it really depends on what you want. And the way you're going to get that is by playing with different resistor values. Now, I'm not smart enough to be able to tell you what resistors to use. Um, I found a tutorial, which I'll be talking about in a second and linking to, that kind of gave me um, a starting point but you can play with different ones and see what kind of output you're going to get. And you can make a whole bunch of these. You can make several different ones depending on the situation that you're in. And finally, there is another video that I found when I was trying to figure out how to exactly make this and that really helped me get started and figuring out which resistors to use and all that kind of stuff. So you can find a link to that in the description below. So that does it for this tutorial. I'd love to hear if you have any modification ideas for something like this. I've been using it already and it really is awesome, especially if you're going to be shooting a bunch of run and gun audio using something like a Rode microphone. It takes up almost no space, it's super light, and you just put this in between your microphone and your camera or a microphone and your recorder. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to get more videos here at DSLR Video Shooter. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.